I'll be using Inkscape, but you can use any software you have access to, such as Photoshop, GIMP, or Affinity Designer. I right click on the document and change the scale to 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. I pull out horizontal and vertical guides to 500 pixels. I use the rectangle tool and make a 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel square and fill it with a black color. I'll then lock this layer so I don't accidentally select it. We need this to be black so it will act as a neutral height for the mask. Remember that the darker the color, the closer to neutral or slightly raised it will be. Or if you use the inverse and dig into the mesh when you're sculpting, the darker the color, the more it will dig into the mesh. This will make more sense when we use this on a mesh. Make sure that whatever you add does not touch the edges of the black square or you'll have an ugly square surrounding your alpha when you use it on a mesh. I make a new rectangle that is 970 pixels and center it on the document. And then I fill the rectangle with a 60% gray. I round the corners using the node tool. I use Ctrl D to duplicate the square. I decrease the scale to 950 pixels and center it. And then fill it with a 40% gray. I use Ctrl D to duplicate the square. Then I decrease the scale to 940 pixels and center it. I fill it with a red color just so I can see it. I select these two squares and under the path menu I choose difference to cut out the interior of the rectangle. I use the ellipse tool and make a circle that is 330 pixels. Note, holding down shift and control will allow you to make a proportional square or circle. I make sure it's centered according to the guides. And I fill it with 20% gray. I add a second smaller square. I fill this square with 40% gray and use the node tool to round out the corners. I use Ctrl D to duplicate the square and scale it down. And then center it within the bottom square. I fill this square with 30% gray. I select both squares and use Ctrl G to group them. I move the group so it's 30 pixels away from the stroke I made earlier. I 
I make a long skinny rectangle filled with 60% gray. I make seven copies and space them evenly. I then group them and center them on top of the lighter small square. I group and duplicate the group and move it to the left side. I duplicate both of these groups and move them to the bottom. I select all four groups and group them together. And I move this layer below the circle. I duplicate the circle and decrease the size to 630 pixels. I center the new circle and fill it with a 40% gray. I then select the stroke option and holding down the shift key, I select 40% gray. I then clear the fill. I change the width of the stroke to 25 pixels. And I change the scale back to 630 pixels and center it. I duplicate the circle and decrease the size to 615 pixels. Center the new circle and fill it with 30% gray. I then select the stroke option and holding down the shift key, I select the 40% gray. I duplicate the circle and decrease the size to 550 pixels. I center the new circle. I duplicate the large circle and change the size to 400 pixels. I fill it with a 70% gray and center it. I duplicate this circle and change the size to 350 pixels. I fill it with a 20% gray and center it. I add a rectangle that is 50 pixels by 75 pixels. I change the color to red so I can easily see it. I center it over the 70% filled center circle. I use the node tool to turn the rectangle into a capsule shape. I duplicate the rectangle and move it to the left side. I select both rectangles and group them. I duplicate both rectangles. I click on the duplicate a second time and rotate them 90 degrees. I then group all the rectangles into one group. I select each rectangle individually and also select the 70% filled circle. Under the path menu, I choose difference.
I export this alpha as a PNG, but you can also use a JPEG. In Blender, I already have a plane that has been subdivided. Under the texture panel, add a new texture and open the texture tab. In the texture tab, I open the alpha I just made. Back on the brushes tab, under the fall off panel, I change the fall off type to constant. I change the mapping option to stencil. Use the right mouse button to move the stencil. I use shift and right mouse button to scale the stencil. Control the right mouse button will allow you to rotate the stencil. And make sure my brush size is larger than the stencil. I can now left click and apply my stencil. If you enjoyed this video on making sculpting alphas in Inkscape, then you're probably interested in 3D sculpting or 3D modeling. So if you're interested in those topics, you may enjoy this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day.